Recall from previous lessons that to find a second derivative, we have to take the derivative of the first derivative. This is what this looks like mathematically. The second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to d dx of that first derivative, dy dx. Now we can apply this to parametric equations, but it gets a little bit weird here. The second derivative of a curve defined by the parametric equations x of t and y of t can be found using this formula. So first we start out with this second derivative of y with respect to x, and then what we do is we bring this rule down here. Notice that I've placed the dy dx entirely in the numerator here. That's completely fine. It's still the same thing. So we're taking d of dy dx with respect to x. But then the problem is whenever we take a parametric derivative, we have to include that t somewhere. So instead of just taking a plain d dx, we're going to take d dt over dx dt. Notice that we've placed this dt in the denominator of the numerator and the denominator. So what we wind up with is this formula. This is the formula that we use to find the second derivative of, of a parametric curve. d dt of dy dx, our first derivative, over dx dt. Let's practice using this formula with an example. Consider the curve defined by the parametric equations x of t equals 2t cubed plus 6 and y of t equals t to the fourth. Find the second derivative of y with respect to x. First, I'm just going to copy down this formula so that I know what I'm doing. We have the second derivative of y with respect to x is equal to d dt of our first derivative, dy dx, all over dx dt. It would be a good idea to commit this to memory for the AP exam. Now, if we're trying to find d dt of dy dx, the first thing we have to do is go off to the side and find dy dx. Now, if you're not familiar with finding a first derivative of a parametric equation, I have a separate video where we cover that topic. To find dy dx, our first derivative, we're going to set that equal to dy dt over dx dt because we need to use both of these equations in finding our derivative. For dy dt, we take the derivative of this t to the power of 4, which is going to be 4t cubed. For the dx dt, we take the derivative of 2t cubed plus 6, which is going to be 6t squared. This can be simplified down into 2t over 3. Now, this is what we're going to plug back in for our dy dx. So we're trying to find d dt of dy dx or of 2t over 3. I'm going to write that as 2 thirds t for now. And that's all over dx dt. Remember that our dx dt is simply 6t squared. So that's all going to be over 6t squared. Then we have to find the derivative with respect to t of 2 thirds t. That's just going to be a plain 2 thirds. And in the denominator, we have 6t squared. Then we can do a bit more simplifying here. We would get that this is equal to... 2 thirds times 1 over 6t squared. That's equal to 2 over 18t squared or 1 over 9t squared. That would be our second derivative. This is equal to the second derivative of y with respect to x. And if we wanted to find that at a specific value, we could just plug in whatever we wanted for t. That's going to tell us about the concavity of the curve defined by these parametric equations. If x equals t cubed plus 4 and y equals the natural log of t, what is the second derivative of y with respect to x in terms of t? This looks like a parametric situation because even though we don't, they didn't explicitly give us x of t and y of t, we see those t's in the equations. So if we're trying to find the second derivative of y with respect to x, we're going to have to use that formula, which is d dt of dy dx, the first derivative, all over dx dt. Then we have to find what this dy dx really is. Remember that dy dx, when we're dealing with parametrics, is going to be found by taking dy dt over dx dt. dy dt, we take the derivative of the natural log of t with respect to t, and that's just 1 over t. Then we take the derivative of t cubed plus 4 with respect to t, and that's going to be 3t squared. We can simplify this down into 1 over 3t cubed. Now what we do is we plug this back in for our dy dx. So we would say this is equal to d dt of our dy dx. Now knowing that I'm going to have to take the derivative of this 1 over 3t cubed later, I'm going to write this as 1 third times t to the power of negative 3, which is going to make it really easy to use the power rule later. That's all over dx dt, which we know is 3t squared. Then we actually take the derivative of this 1 third t to the power of negative 3. So we have 1 third times negative 3t to the power of negative 4, that's all over 3t squared still. Then we can continue this cleanup. The 3s will cancel and we'll have negative 1 over t to the 4th over 3t squared. Then to simplify this, we take negative 1 over t to the 4th times 1 over 3t squared, which gets us negative 1 over 
t to the sixth. Negative one over three t to the sixth matches answer choice c. That's our second derivative in terms of t. Consider the curve defined by the parametric equations x of t equals four times the cosine of t and y of t is equal to t. What is the second derivative of y with respect to x at t equals pi over three? First, I'm just gonna find the second derivative of y with respect to x. Then I can plug in my t equals pi over three. To find the second derivative of y with respect to x of parametric equations, remember that formula that we use. We use d dt of our first derivative, dy dx, all over dx dt. This is gonna involve finding our first derivative as a first step. If we're trying to find dy dx, remember that to find the first derivative for parametric equations, we're gonna use the formula dy dt over dx dt. Now dy dt, looking at this equation, we have y of t is equal to t. The derivative of t with respect to t is just a one. For dx dt, we have to find the derivative of four cosine t with respect to t. That's gonna be negative four times the sine of t. So this is our first derivative dy dx. To make this a bit easier later, I'm going to write this as negative 4 times the sine of t to the power of negative 1. That's going to make it so we can use the chain rule instead of the quotient rule when we have to go back and differentiate this. Because now that we have that first derivative, we can plug this back into our equation. We would be looking for d dt of, and then instead of writing dy dx, we're going to write this, and that's all over dx dt. We know that dx dt is negative 4 times the sine of t. Then we need to differentiate this. This is gonna be a chain rule problem. We would bring the negative one out to the front, then we have that stuff on the inside, which is gonna stay the same for now, negative four times the sine of t, and that's to the power of negative two. Then we multiply that by the derivative of the inside stuff. The derivative of negative four times the sine of t is gonna make a negative four times the cosine of t. Then that entire thing is still over negative four times the sine of t. Let's do a little bit of cleanup here, and then we'll be able to plug in our value of t equals pi over three. If we have negative four times the sine of t to the power of negative two in our numerator, and what's really negative four to the sine of t to the power of one in our denominator, we can bring these to the denominator, and in our denominator, we would have negative four times the sine of t, and that entire thing would be to the power of three. Now, in our numerator, we're gonna have this negative one times negative four cosine t, which really just makes a four times the cosine of t. This is our second derivative equation. Then we can take that second derivative equation and we're gonna figure out what is that at t equals pi over three. To figure that out, I take pi over three and I plug it in for t everywhere I see a t up here. So we have four times the cosine of pi over three over negative four times the sine of pi over three cubed. And then we can evaluate. The cosine of pi over three is one half. So we have four times one half. The sine of pi over three is gonna be rad three over two. So we have negative four times rad three over two and that's all cubed. Then we can continue the cleanup process here. In the numerator, four times one half is really just a two. In the denominator, I'm gonna rewrite this as a negative two rad three, and that's still all getting cubed. Then we can clean this up into two over, and then negative two cubed, that's gonna make a negative eight. So we have negative eight, and then rad three cubed, well, if, it were, if we were squaring this, it would cancel and it would become a plane three. But because we have this rad three cubed, we're gonna write that as three to the power of three halves instead. Then we can continue cleaning this one up just a little bit. And we would have negative one over four times three to the power of three halves. That would be our second derivative at t equals pi over three. This matches answer choice B. Consider the curve C defined by the parametric equations x of t equals 5t and y of t equals t cubed minus 3t squared minus 1. Find the intervals of t on which C is concave up and the intervals of t on which C is concave down. Justify your response. To determine concavity, we need to find the second derivative, which is going to be the second derivative of y with respect to x. Now, because we're dealing with parametric equations, we have to use that formula that we learned, which is d dt of dy dx, the first derivative, over dx dt. And the first step of this involves taking dy dx. We have to figure out what is dy dx. Since we're given two parametric equations, what we have to do is we is say dy dt over dx dt. In this case, the dy dt, if we take the derivative of this equation, that's going to be 3t squared minus 6t. And dx dt, the derivative of 5t with respect to t, is going to be a 5. I'm gonna write this as 3 fifths t squared minus 6 fifths t. Now I can plug this back into my equation. 
So my second derivative is equal to d dt of this, which is my first derivative, 3 fifths t squared minus 6 fifths t, and that's all over dx dt. Now dx dt we know is just going to be a 5. Then we need to take the derivative of this top equation. The derivative of 3 fifths t squared is going to be 6 fifths t minus 6 fifths, and that's all over 5. Then we can clean this up into 6 20 fifths t minus 6 20 fifths. That's the second derivative in terms of t. Now we have to find the intervals of t on which c is concave up and the intervals of t on which c is concave down. Let's make a sign chart for the second derivative. Off to the side, we're going to label this sign chart as the second derivative of y with respect to x, and then we're going to have certain values of t along here. What values of t should we put? Well, we're going to want to put our points of inflection, which is where our second derivative is changing from positive to negative or vice versa. This involves taking our second derivative and setting it equal to zero. If we take 6 25ths t and set it equal to zero, that's going to wind up being 6 25ths t is equal to 6 25ths, which means that t is equal to one. That's going to be a possible point of inflection. So we're going to say t equals one is going to be right there. Now we don't have any more possible points of inflection because we don't have any other values that would make our second derivative equal to zero. Now we can start testing in this range and this range to see where our second derivative is positive and where it's negative. Let's first take the second derivative of y with respect to x at t equals zero to figure out what's going on with the sign in this range. So we would say 6 25ths times zero in this case, minus 6 25ths. Well, that's gonna be a negative number. So we would put a negative sign right up there. Then let's test something in this window. Let's test two. If we take the second derivative of y with respect to x at t equals 2, that's going to be 6 25ths times 2 minus 6 25ths, which is going to be a plain 6 25ths, which is a positive number. Therefore, we know that t equals 1 is going to be one of our points of inflection. Now we have to just do our justification. We know that c is going to be concave up on the open interval from 1 to infinity because our second derivative is positive there. And we know that c is going to be concave down from negative infinity to positive 1 because our second derivative is negative there. There's my full response. c is concave up on 1 less than t less than infinity because the second derivative of y with respect to x is greater than 0 on that interval. c is concave down on negative infinity less than t less than 1 because the second derivative of y with respect to x is less than 0 on that interval.